Hello, Caesar here again, and I just got done finishing my video on my first impressions of the Arc Hall backpack by Z-Pax, and I figured I have it all packed up, so might as well do a what's in my pack uh, for winter. Uh, this is it's now February 2016, and I went out on a weekend trip with uh, some friends of mine. Uh, the temperatures uh, were a low of around minus 9. That's what the official weather report said. Anyhow, uh, from my experiences, and as I'm sure many of you have also learned the hard way, uh, that can change uh, quite a bit. Unfortunately, when I woke up in the morning, I was just interested in breakfast and getting into my routine, so I didn't check my thermometer, which I actually I keep a little th mini thermometer here on my, on my bag. Uh, when I finally got around to checking, it was after I'd broken camp and it was, the sun had already come out again. Uh, it was around, I think, probably 9 o'clock or so, uh, 9.30, and it was minus 5, minus 6. So I think, actually, in this case, the weather was probably um, accurate or somewhat accurate, or maybe it was a little bit colder because we were actually camped out uh, in near a valley, uh, where a river was. However, uh, because of course you don't want to sleep down in the cold sink where the air pools, uh, pools down, right? The cold air of course sinks. Uh, me and my friends we decided to camp up on a, a hill overlooking uh, the river so we were we had some elevation so to avoid that cold sink. But it was pretty uh, chilly but I slept toasty toasty warm. I slept for 10 hours. I slept really well. There was I actually slept with the sleeping bag just kind of on my, like up to my torso when I first went to sleep. Then in the like wee hours in the morning, like right before dawn, I woke up because of the cold. It's often the coldest right before the sun comes up. So all I had to do was, you know, bring the sleeping bag up and cinch it down, you know, around me. And I went right back to sleep, toasty, toasty warm. So. Uh, yeah, it was a successful, awesome trip. I was super comfortable the whole time uh, with the dialed-in ultralight kit. Hey, man, I'm living the dream. Um, further pushing, as I've said in other videos, like I've been backpacking for like 20 years now, and I've gone from like when I first started, it was like a five or a six. It was like ah, this is all right. I like the views. I like being on nature, but oh man, the, the gear was heavy and. A lot of it was not that, it didn't work out that well, uh, for me at least, right? So now I feel like I'm in that 9 threshold where it's better than it's ever been, and it's just pushing that envelope, you know, all the further, right? So anyway, without further ado, let's get into what is in the pack, right? I also had with me a satchel, um, and together it's about 5 kilos. The base pack for just the pack itself and everything in there without food and water was 4.5 uh, kilos on my scale. And then the satchel was about 500 grams or so. Um, so yeah, you're looking at a total of about 5 kilo base weight. Uh, okay, so let's check it out. Plenty of room, you'll see too. Plenty of room for food here. And I took luxury food on this trip. I took fresh fruit. I took extra food for my friends. I took plenty of snacks. I decided I wanted to like dump the weight. I even took more water than I'm used to so I wouldn't have to like um, mess around with boiling or filtering or anything. I left my filter at home and I took um, bigger bottles. I took these are, might as well start somewhere, right? I'll start with just my water bottles. These are just recycled water bottles and they're 800 milliliters. I normally take like either half a liter or a little over like 650 milliliters but yeah this works out to be you know a liter over a liter and a half of water which is um, more than enough to suit my needs for just like a weekend trip just a two day one night two day trip worked out fine uh, okay so yeah so we have on in the side pockets just two 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 of the bottles there um, and then I guess I can then continue here I got a little sit pad, just a little foam sit pad, the same one I've been using for a few years now. Let's go into the pocket first before I break down everything in the top, but yeah. I did want to show off the plenty of room for food. Uh, this thing is 60 liters and it's got lots of room to spare. So, I decided to go no cook, no cook um, 
this trim because we we're gonna have a fire. I'm actually, if you've been following like my blogs and what I say on forums and such, I'm not that big of a fan of uh, having fires, um, which I won't get into why. It's, I know it's a controversial subject because to many backpackers and outdoor enthusiasts, a fire is like a sacred, you know, precious thing. And I like fires too, but um, there's some health concerns I have with the smoke and all that. But anyway, so my friends, they insisted, you know, we're going to have a fire. So I decided I'll take advantage of it. I'll leave my stove at home and I'll take food that I can cook over the fire and just no cook foods like snacks you know stuff like that but anyway let's see what i can pull out of here on the pocket ditty bag is up first not much to it you know a little bit of soap toothbrush toothpaste little towel right spare batteries right this hasn't really changed all that much some spare cordage you know a rubber band a spare mitten hook safety pins you know handy dandy stuff like that and then some tissue paper slash toilet papers in there too. This is my titanium mug since I was not going to take my cook kit. I decided I'll take my mug so I can have some hot beverages because I knew my friends, you know, they boiled up some tea so I had some of that and some wine and some uh, rum and you know, so it's nice to have a little, um, con uh, you know, cup or container to drink from. And it only weighs 35 grams. Right, so yeah, a lovely little titanium mug. So I have my Sea to Summit Alpha Light spoon, right, just to help with eating stuff, right. And then in here I have my ground cover, right. I normally have my gaiters in here, but I actually wore the gaiters all the way home because there's a little bit of snow outside, so I decided I would keep them on uh, all the way home. Uh, but yeah. So my ground cover, same ground cover, this is the SOL, um, it's like the more durable and less crinkly, noisy space blanket type uh, survival blanket. And it's got the orange on one side and the silver on the other, so it can double for like signaling right in the rare event of an emergency, but yeah. So there's that. Alright, headlamp, I could upgrade. Uh, it's just a black diamond headlamp. It's on the slightly heavy side if you're an ultralight gram geek, right? But um, yeah, there was a sale, and I, it's got decent lumens. I think it's got like 90 or 100 lumens, right? So it's bright. It runs on uh, AAA batteries, right? I'll probably upgrade this um, sometime soon, but it served me well. Okay. First aid kit and repair kit. Pretty uh, straightforward. Here, this is a new addition because I've since finally joined the smartphone club. 2015 was the year I finally joined. I know I was mocked by my friends and coworkers and family alike, but finally I broke down and got a smartphone. That's what I'm filming on right now. Uh, so yeah, that was in my satchel. And then in here I have a little anchor external battery to charge my phone with a plug and cord in a zip locks a you know uh, zip pouch very water resistant I wouldn't call it you know waterproof but then of course it's in a water resistant bag in a water resistant pocket and then I have a poncho which I can put over that if it feels raining but it's winter so it'd be snow so very safe right very low chance in the winter that's one upside to winter backpacking is that unless the snow is very wet and it's like near freezing but since it was pretty cold out uh, it was dry and crisp and nice titanium tent stakes and a silicone nylon bag this is actually the so the tent bag tent stake bag from uh from tarp tent i switched over just because it's a little bit more room i have the cuban fiber z pack stake stake bag but because my shelter setup requires a little bit more stakes i have 12 stakes in here I decided to have a bigger one, just a little easier. So 10 sticks. And then I have my baggie of cord for my tarp. And this is, you know what? I don't know. I wish I knew who made, you know, some of the bags. I'm one of those people if like I get packaging or if I, you know, I see a nice little bag, uh, like, you know, I'll just like, I'll take it and incorporate it. But this little baggie has been very durable. I've used this for like a few years now. Uh, and it's been great just to keep my, I just need a little bag to keep my cordage, right? 
and uh, I'm surprised it's lasted this, has lasted this long. A slight new addition, I've added some S clips, some plastic little S clips, right? And they're easier to use and weigh slightly less than the mini carabiners I was using before. Uh, but yeah, and if you see here, I have, this is the, this is a reflective line for the front of the tarp. So at the nighttime, I can find my entrance, the entrance to the shelter. Then I have an extender if I need to extend the front. And then I have a longer one that's for the back of the tarp. And then these are for the poncho, my poncho, should I wish to put a foyer on this trip. It was very low wind and just light snow, so I didn't need to add a front door or foyer or anything like that. Alright, I'll put a link uh, to the description below too uh, for my, I, re I recently did this, um, you know, first impression of the backpack. And I have a blog post on there, but there's pictures too of my shelter and you know a, a bit of the surroundings if you're interested you can check that out to see my shelter set up in action uh, okay uh, spare thing of paper this was actually not so much for me but for my friends because from my experiences because I was going with three other friends I find people often will not take enough or forget because there's a few kind of uh, well, no there's one guy who's pretty new to backpack the other two guys are veterans right but just a little extra to cover for other people or to clean up or whatever, right? I ended up not, we didn't, you know, uh, use it, but so on some trips I'll take a little extra uh, paper. All right, okay, some rope. This is for hanging of food, right? I actually did not need to hang food on this particular trip. Let me just loop that back there. Because um, there was a cabin that, uh, there were four of us, two stayed inside of the cabin and the other two of us, we slept outside. And so I left my food inside the cabin on a hook, hanging up like on the rafters so no mice or anything would get to it. Uh, and this area where we were at, where was, there are no bears around there that I'm aware of, right? Uh, so yeah, it was fine. Got a little mini carabiner on there too. Uh, so when I need to use it, it's easier. That's it for the front pocket. Uh, if I were to go on a more extended trip, um, or I wanted to have like, more hot meals and I would not have a fire, I would put my cook kit in here, and it's big enough that I could, you know, easily, you know, fit the um, the my pot in the front pocket rather than in here. But there would be room in here too. But it's a nice little addition of having this pot, this big pocket. Okay, let's get into. The big pouch. Okay, in here, I'm not going to open all the bags, but I have in this uh, silicone nylon stuff, I, stuff sack, I have my Mont Bell Alpine Light Down uh, jacket, hooded jacket, parka, whatever you want to call it, right? Very, very happy with this. It's also nice with, uh, to use in addition to my sleep system because when it gets cold, right? Because my sleeping bag is rated to minus 7 Celsius, right? But I do a few things to push that further and I, as I said before I slept toasty warm one thing is to wear a nice hooded uh, warm jacket so I wore that to bed had uh, my, the hood up right and what's nice too with the hoodless sleeping bag a mummy bag from my experiences in the past and actually the friend who went with me he was using a mummy, mummy bag and he pointed this out to me before I even said anything he said yeah mummy bags you know I, I prefer them they're I, I like them but one thing that really bothers me is that the condensation on the inside and it's true if you roll the wrong way and you breathe inside you know it gets you know kind of sticky in there uh, I find by using a hooded jacket you know the hood goes with you right I, and I have not had any problem with condensation and when I woke up this morning uh, it, I was dry everything was dry no condensation at all so yeah nice down jacket is a uh, good thing to have all right, and here in this uh, Cuban dry bag from z -Packs, I have my rain gear. So I have my rain mitts, Golight uh, poncho tarp, and then I have my silicone nylon rain pants. That's that. There are actually not, it's not too much to the inside here, but I will go quicker. I have my, this is my Mountain Laurel Designs uh, Serenity net tent that's solo and silicone nylon. Right, I like this both for winter and some uh, year round, all the seasons. Because here's the thing, in the winter, even though there are no bugs, there are still mice, and 
there is also like the snow can blow around right if there's wind so the netting keeps snow off and um, the main thing is mice I mean I yeah I guess you could make an argument there are other animals out there in the winter that could you know be a nuisance but uh, yeah mice are active um, year-round and I've had mice actually try to get into this shelter before but that was in the summer where they're more more active right but uh, that experience of course um, you know validated my you know concerns about mice I've had I've actually woken up before with mice sleeping on top of my bivy where I've had the tie out on the hood of my bivy tied to the roof of a shelter and I've woken up to have a mouse curl up. believe it or not I don't care all right but there's a mouse sleeping and I had to like actually I poked it and it didn't move and I had to actually like boom like I had to like push it off of my bivy so it's mice and slugs and bugs of course this you know that's the problem in the summer but yeah net tents are good to have and I'm very very happy with that I feel like I've really broken that shelter in now the next part of the shelter of course is my tarp this is my z-pax Cuban fiber and 1.0 Cuban fiber, the thicker, stronger, tougher Cuban fiber that is still lighter than any silicone nylon that I'm uh, aware of that has like the same hydrostatic kit. I know that there are a ton of new fabrics coming out there, like there's sil silicone polyester now, sil poly, and all these other like different variants, but um, there's nothing that can like match the waterproofness and durability uh, of Cuban, and I feel that the 1.0 eliminates the abrasion concern and really as a shelter it shouldn't be facing that much abrasion to begin with but yeah wonderful tarp six by nine love it i also feel like i've gotten really good use out of this now so that's that clothing bag i just have my i have pajama pants and when i say pajama pants what i mean is just i have a, a old pair of running pants where i cut the zippers off and it's just a thin nylon, you know, pants that I put over my wool um, leggings that I wear. I wear I wear the wool leggings to bed, which I wore under my hiking pants, and then I'll put that on. And then I have a pair of sleep socks, uh, like a thicker, like ski sleep socks that go up to like my almost to my knee, right, to keep me warm, my feet warm and toasty when I when I sleep. I also carry a down beanie and my pillow. I have a uh, two pillows, uh, which I've shown off in other videos, uh, right? But yeah, so clothing bag, sleep pad, Thermarest, X Therm sleep pad, size regular, love it, warm, 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 and um, when it's you know when it's really cold out, because to me I always I'm kind of paranoid and I, I like. To, like play it safe when it says low of minus nine i'm thinking low of like minus 12 you know i don't think it got that cold but you know as a just in case but yeah this is super awesome pad super warm uh people complain about the noise but i don't really it doesn't bother me right you know like new air external now here comes the sleeping bag we're almost down there to the bottom we'll make it under 20 minutes at least right uh this is my z packs uh, 20 degree or minus 7 Celsius sleeping bag and a silicone nylon uh, stuff sack. It's a larger stuff sack that I've had for years now. The z packs no longer makes a silicone nylon stuff sacks, but this is the larger size. I like to preserve the loft in my sleeping bags, right? I don't like to like stuff them down tiny, tiny into like the smallest stuff sack that I can get them in. Um, that's just to help the longevity of the bag, hopefully, right? because uh, that's a big investment in a nice down bag and I love this bag uh, kept me toasty warm uh, and yeah that's the sleeping bag all right last but not least this is something I wrote about when I reviewed kind of like my top five favorite pieces of gear uh, from 2015 this is the uh, SOL escape light bivy 150 grams and adds significant amount of warmth um, and also keeps my down bag I dry. I've noticed that it's significantly drier in the foot box the foot box was the only place I will get kind of damp you know um, my sleeping bag would get damp but that also goes for any synthetic uh, bags I've used in the past or whatever 
I said I would keep it under 20 minutes, but here I go again. Ah, doesn't matter. So anyway, um, so I've noticed over the years, no matter what, I don't know if I have sweaty feet or what the deal is, but my uh, foot box will be, you know, either a little damp or, you know, somewhat moist, right? But I've noticed that using this, right, it's um, it's drier. It's, def it's definitely drier uh, and warmer. And again, the added benefit if I the rare event of an emergency. It's a nice peace of mind to have something that you can signal with, right? Uh, I've gotten some fairly good use out of this. I've, I've been using this for nearly a year now, and um, so far no durability issues uh, with it. And I keep that just at the very bottom of the pack. And that's that. That's it. That's what's in my pack. And now look at this. It's empty, super, super light, right? Um... I guess I could show you what's in the satchel, right? But it's pretty boring. It's like I have a Swiss Army knife and chapstick, compass, backup little light. You know, you're, and my map, of course. You know, it's nice to have the map in front. But that's about it. Snack, too, you know. I won't go through that. This video is long enough. But I hope this was helpful, entertaining. Um, and, uh, yeah, I like... Checking out what's in the pack type videos myself, so uh, yeah, I figure why not. I haven't made one for winter. I've done two for summer, so here's my winter loadout. Uh, 4.5 base weight again for the pack, and this is um, yeah, no complaints. I can't even think about anything that I could in improve, and I'm a stickler for you know always constantly looking to evolve, improve etc but i'm very very satisfied with uh this um this setup all right thanks for watching take care stay warm out there goodbye